Hello, I'm Brett Marshall, sports editor of the Garden City Telegram, and welcome to SportsWire. I'm Levi Bernfin. This week we'll take a quick look at Garden City Community College's loss on the road at Fort Scott, as well as Garden City High School's big district win over Hutchinson. Levi, Jeff Sims and the Bronc Buzzers went to Fort Scott. Coach Sims' former stomping grounds back in the late 2000s, uh, national championship game in 2009. Uh, it just didn't work out very well for, for him and the Buzzers. What what was the storyline this week? Yeah, it was, it was kind of just a, when it rains, it pours a little bit for when you combine – some bad luck with a with a team that's struggling it doesn't usually work out in your favor very often. Uh, in the middle of the third quarter, they score a touchdown, cut it cut the deficit to twenty four twenty. They were leading, they were trailing the entire game up until that point, but they were coming from behind. Uh, but on the ensuing extra point, it's blocked. Fort Scott picks it up, runs it fifty yards, laterals it, runs it the other fifty yards. That's crazy. Yeah, it, it's it was it was just something you don't see very often. Uh, and instead of being down twenty four twenty one, it's twenty six twenty. Uh, Garden City loses the momentum. Fort Scott pours it on there at the end for the 36-20 win for Fort Scott. And for, from a historical standpoint, a, a pretty not not good statistic. It was their seventh straight loss, first time in program history yeah. they've ever lost seven games in a row in one season. That's right, that's, yeah. That's a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, it is tough. And, you know, they've, they've lost seven in a row the last time the program did. It was 1983-1984, but that was across two seasons. Never before they lost in the – consecutive season like you said um even in 08 and 1 seasons they've had two of those and the tie happened to break up the losing streaks so it's it's it was been a rough stretch well while the college just lost seven in a row the high school won its seventh of the row this season they're seven and oh a big district win over hutchinson on friday well, they haven't had much luck against the Salt Hawks over the yeah. last uh, 15 years. In fact, not many people have. No, they haven't. It's uh, only the second time they got a win. It was 14 to two. Hutch got a huge safety at the at the beginning of the second quarter to go up two to nothing. Going in for a touchdown, got stopped on fourth and one. Garden gets the ball back, and then they get tackled in the end zone. And then after Garden punted the ball away, Hutch comes marching right back down the field again and gets back to the one-yard line. And what happens? They get a penalty that's a very strange penalty, and they called it interlocking hands, something that I found out from several, a couple of officials in the area that's very rarely called. And so it put them back five yards. They overthrow a wide-open receiver in the end zone, turn the ball over on downs three plays later. Peyton Hill breaks loose for an 89-yard touchdown run. Huge momentum that was changer. A, that was as impressive of a run as I've seen this season. Well, it's probably what it'll go down as one of the great runs, you know, in recent years for Garden High, and certainly changed the whole tenor of the momentum of that game. Because up until then, Garden was struggling, you know, stopping mm-hmm. Hutch's running game, and Hutch has been averaging 350 to 360 yards a game, and. Uh, it just gave the team a lot of confidence after they got up seven to two, and then they scored right before halftime again to make it fourteen to two in the third quarter, and then they just kind of held off. Yeah, the demons put the clamps down in the second second they half. They did. They limited Hutch to ninety eight yards rushing in the second half, yeah, and I don't think very many people really thought that could happen. Yeah. Garden City High School wasn't the only team, the high school team in the area that got a big win on Friday. Uh, Ulysses, Scott City, Holcomb all got wins on Friday. Recap a little bit of what happened. Well, probably the surprising game was Ulysses going to Mulvane to open up their Class 4A uh, Division One district opener. They were down two touchdowns in the second half, rallied for a big 34-31 yeah, win. Big comeback. Uh, you know, that's huge. If you don't win your uh, district opener, it's pretty tough, yeah. you know, to, to at least have a chance to win the district. And so the Tigers got a big win that way. Uh, Scott City and Holcomb continue to roll along. Scott City still undefeated, uh, 7-0. and they beat Southwestern Heights 52 to 13 and really were in control most of the way. Yeah. Holcomb the same way. They had a home game against Larned, wins 36 to nothing. They haven't lost since they lost to the to Scott City and Ulysses. Yeah. So, uh, and both and Scott City's in 3A and Holcomb in 4A Division Two. So, all three of the area teams that we thought were going to look good, I think they're coming along pretty good and looking good in the districts. 
Well, Levi, things just don't get any easier no. for the for the Busters. <laughs> uh, it uh, they're on the road this week to El Dorado and face number one ranked Butler, yeah. and they haven't had much luck against Butler in re- in recent years. So, what the heck is uh, are the Bronc Busters going to do this week? Yeah, Butler just beat the previously number one ranked Coffeeville last week in a great game, forty two thirty nine, back and forth game that both teams led at one point. Uh, and so after that win, uh, Butler's Butler's number one. Deservedly so. They're on the right track to be playing the national championship yet again for that program. Uh, Garden City's goal on Saturday, I think, is just to remain competitive. High school will also be traveling this week, heading down to Wichita, take on a really strong Wichita Northwest team. Uh, can the Buffs knock off the High Park Grizzlies? Well, you know, Butler's number one in the JUCO. Wichita Northwest is the people's choice for number one in Class 6A right now across the state of Kansas. So can they win? Sure. But, boy, they're going to have to have a lot of things go well. They're not going to be able to turn the ball over and get away with it. They're going to have to somehow find a way to slow down this juggernaut offense that Northwest has got. And it's a balanced offense. It's not Mm -hmm. just one way. I mean, they throw the ball. They run the ball effectively. They score quick. And then their defense comes up with a a lot of turnover. So Coach Brian Hill and the – the Buffs have, have a daunting task in front of them, but it's not impossible. They went down there two years ago in the playoffs, and nobody expected them to win, and they came away with a huge 40-36 to 36 win that was one of the great football games I've oh, watched in the yeah. last several years where the lead went back and forth in the last four or five minutes. I think there was like five touchdowns in the fourth quarter that night, and it was just a, a great game, and I would expect the possibility that that might happen again. So I think it's going to be one of the – uh, premier games in the state of Kansas this coming week. This week we also had state golf wrapped up. Uh, Daniel Gaspar of Garden City High School wrapped up her high school or Garden City High School career within in fine fashion on Monday. Well, she did. You know, it's an interesting story. Danielle finished second in Class 6A individually. She shot a 78 in very tough, windy conditions on a, on an extremely difficult golf course, Teradyne Country Club in Andover. Um, you know, I've played golf there. It's incredibly uh, tight fairways. Greens are very rolling and undulating. And she played a great round of golf. And it's her last tournament, you know, for Garden High, even though she's a junior. Her family's moving to Idaho. And it's a, like I said, it's a, one of those feel-good stories because she wasn't enrolled here at Garden High at the beginning of the fall semester, and then they couldn't get their house sold early, so she and her mom decided to stay here. They re-enrolled her uh, mid-September. She set out the first three or four tournaments, got eligible again, and did really well. And what a, what a nice way to finish yeah, out definitely. her career at, Gar- at Garden High. Just it's a like I said, it's just a great story, and just couldn't be happier for her. That's it for this week. I'm Brett Marshall. And I'm Levi Bernfin. You've been watching SportsWire, a weekly talk show brought to you by the Garden City Telegram. You can find us every Thursday evening at 5 p.m. at www.gctelegram.com. And for more prep sports, go to swkprepzone.com.